six thirty. So at this time, I will call the meeting to order for the regular meeting of the board, and we'll start with our pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so we'll start with the adoption of the agenda. It is recommended that the agenda of the May 18th, 2023 regular meeting of the Board of School Trustees be approved as presented. Motion. Motion. Oh, go ahead. Motion. Second. All in favor? Approval of the minutes. It is recommended that the minutes of the April 13th, 2023 regular meeting of the Board of School Trustees be approved as presented. Motion. Second. All in favor? Any statements or questions from the public? No one signed to speak. Okay. Okay, so we'll move on to our spotlight. So we'll have uh, Marilyn Bailey and the Southeast Fountain Elementary Robotics team. You can use this part of the table. Maybe we'll just go over there and we'll be fine. Yep. So I'm going to talk to just a little bit and I'm going to introduce you all. Okay. All right. Um, thank you very much for allowing us to showcase our relaunch of the robotics program for the elementary school. A group of almost 25 students met for an hour on Wednesdays from February to April, learning about the basics of the engineering design process and to, uh, how to create a drivable robot. For the first few weeks, they worked in teams of four to build a prototype of how they wanted their robot to pick up one of these hubs. Sorry, I should grab that. And they could either stack another hub on top or there was a pole they would try to put the hub through. Um, after playing with some of the designs, each group was given a box filled with robot parts and a Chromebook with access to, instructional, to the instructional manual on how to build their ideal robot. Because of the time limitations, I did not expect them to even have a drivable robot at the end of it. However, by the last practice, every kid had a robot that they were driving. So it was amazing. Um, each robot was uniquely designed. Um, every year I'm amazed how, given the same materials and the knowledge, each kid comes out with a different design. So as they share here in a moment, please notice how unique each one is. Um, as always, these students surprise me with their dedication and hard work. Um, we have a few students who would like to share their designs and the challenges they faced. So do we have a volunteer that wants to go first? <laughs> All right, Douglas and Steve, why don't you guys come up here and share your robot? I can put a robot right here. Oh, awesome. You make that all by yourself? Okay, so can you guys share some of the challenges you all face? Yeah. Uh, Engineers wanted to get to the test point and then they went and got a box of the camera. Really? Yeah. So they just go ahead and show, they showed that it's this input and this input, but um, you just had to figure out which one it was. We had to try and put the same model in ours. It was, but on some of those, like, huge, 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 also, we had a motor that didn't work, so we replaced it, and it still didn't work. We ended up figuring out was the wire that wasn't working on the motor. It was a little unstable in the bottom, so the is coming on, so they added that. There is, um, there's that we had to switch brains because our brain was working. We had to download the brain on so the computer. Yeah, because we got the older one, so we had to replace it when she found the new one. What are you calling the brain? Uh, the box. Okay. And then the batteries over here. Mm -hmm. The instruction said there were little pieces like this one right here. They said there was a piece that was like that, except there wasn't, so we had to make them by using other pieces. Um, we had some disagreements on stuff. Like <laughs> <laughs> How'd you work that out? Not <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm going to drive their robot and said, you need to come up with a list. That's <laughs> good. All right, take a look here to share what you and your team had for your robot. Jacob, you, you had your robot? Yeah. Right here. I need to put new batteries. Okay, we'll do that in a little bit. Can you just go ahead and show them what your design was? Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Um, I ended, we ended up with, so, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> so it started with your wheels. What was the problem with your wheels? Oh yeah, um, it was squatting, so, and the wheels were too far out. That's why it was squatting. So we had to put the wheels um, in. And, um, and the wheels, they were too close together. Oh yeah, the wheels were, one of the wheels were too too close together. So um, we had a, a, the wheel was um, hitting the edge of our robot. So I, so we had to um, put the wheel out a little and it, um, I don't know which wheel it was, but it kept some, for some reason. Um, it, it kept getting stuck, so you, you yeah. spread it out. Yeah. And then you guys also decided to go with a bigger wheel. Yeah. Did you? Do you remember why you did that? It's been a minute since you've had um, that. No. Okay. Anthony, just, Anthony just wanted to put bigger wheels on. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the bigger wheels in the front or in the back, Emma? On the front. All right, thank you very awesome. much, Jacob. Good job. Thank you. All right, this is Elliot, fifth grade. Elliot, can you show them your prototype, what we're calling your prototype yeah. first? Yeah, we have a whole bunch of prototypes. I need, can I, can I have the other yep. one? One of our prototypes is this. How it works is it kind of just like flashes around like that and then you put it. We do have three there. <laughs> Another prototype was what we call the bear claw. How it works is you can either use it like this to put it on top or like that to put it on top. So it has multiple ways to be used. And then this one, it's kind of like this one, Justin had these things back here that made it where it couldn't, it was harder for it to slip out of its grip. Did that attach to your robots? Uh, no. No, okay. Because these were separate parts, parts from the robots. <clears throat> then from the robot parts we used, as you can like see right here on the claw. And then... This one, I'm pretty sure, I don't really remember what this one was, but I think this was maybe a makeshift makeshift bug that we made to test out our designs. It doesn't work exactly. So that was what they worked on in the first few weeks, just to kind of work out, kind of work in teams, and also to kind of give them an idea of physically what their robot would need to do before they actually started building on it. Okay, yep, go ahead. And then <clears throat> then um yeah. Oh about the car. Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks good. Wow. And that would be used. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't fully finish the car because if we did, we would have a piece mm -hmm. right here that would make it to where we could grab the hub like that. But okay. we don't really have that. So what we kind of figured out we could do was just like place it like over here and drive it 
Have a little trouble, Bubba? Because I want to now. It's been almost a month since I've been able to drive it, so. There you go. And then we're able to see it. But we can't really get them on top of each other unless I put it on. As you can see, the students worked extremely hard, and I feel they learned more than just about robotics. Um, we worked on many transferable skills such as critical thinking, communication, troubleshooting, and many, many more. Um, my goal is to expand this program even further. Thanks to the efforts of Mrs. Morgan and Mrs. Good and our amazing fourth grade team, our plan is to have every fourth grader exposed to the basics of robotics and coding. Not every kid will resonate with it. However, I've learned that the skills in robotics go beyond the technical skills as they were trying to explain about the teamwork. Mm -hmm. um, learning all these skills will help our students and further uh, their future courses at our schools as well as opportunities in the ever-changing STEM industry. The bigger my teaching philosophy is the bigger lens I can give of the world to my students, the more prepared they will be. So thank you again for giving us an opportunity to showcase our hardworking kids. You guys are awesome. Good job. Thank you so much. Great job. Thank you. 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 Okay, so let's move on now to the administrative recommendations, claims. It's recommended that the prepaid and make claims number 99383 to 99550 be approved as presented. <laughs> All those in favor? Personnel. It is recommended that the resignation of Brian Turner be approved as presented. Motion. All right. Motion. Second. All in favor? It is recommended that the resignation of Belinda Dotson be approved as presented. Motion. Second. All in favor? It is recommended that the resignation of Michaela Munoz be approved as presented. Motion. Second. All in favor. It is recommended that the retirement of Crystal Williams as a bus driver be approved as presented. Motion. Second. All in favor. It is recommended that the resignation of Jessica Elkins be approved as presented. Motion. Second. All in favor. It is recommended that Caitlin Snack be hired as a fifth grade teacher for the 23-24 school year. Motion. She's going to talk about it. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. You're on a roll. Oh, I know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin will be fulfilling a work role as a fifth grade teacher for the 
Um, she's worked a couple of different places, about seven years of experience. Most of it has been at Riverton Park. She's going to be in eighth grade and a sophomore English teacher for us. We're excited to have her on. Great. Motion. Second. All in favor? It is recommended that the resignation of Tom Thompson be approved as presented. Motion. Second. All in favor? <clears throat> it is recommended that Candace Daugherty be hired as an instructional aide at Southeast Fountain Elementary for the 23-24 school year. Candace has been an instructional aide with us prior um, to this, but most recently she has worked in our transportation department um, transporting our developmental preschool students and life skills children um, and just seeing her with them. She has quite a knack um, for those students, and so we're really excited for her to be in our life skills classroom next year as an additional aide as we add more students to the program. Motion. Second. All in favor? It is recommended that the maternity leave for Michaela Hathaway be approved for August 9th, 23 through October 11th, 2023. It's a girl. Okay. Oh, it is. Oh, girl. Uh, motion. Second. All in favor? <laughs> it is recommended that Brooke Coffin be hired as a special education teacher at Southeast Mountain Elementary for the 23 24 school year. Um, Brooke is a Covington graduate, most recently from St. Mary the Woods College. She has worked one year in Terre Haute, um, but would like to be closer to home. Um, so she is fulfilling an additional special education teacher role. The elementary will be focused on math intervention for students K through five. Motion. Second. <clears throat> All in favor? It is recommended that Frankie Swanson be hired as a speech language pathologist for the 23-24 school year. Uh, we are very excited for Frankie. She'll make our second speech pathologist in person after a year doing virtual um, clinicians. We're really excited to have she and Jill Sillery with us. Um, Frankie has been an FLPA for 10 years and worked for We Speak um, Speech Services in Lafayette. Um, but is coming to us. She um, worked with us part time this year, but we're really excited to bring her on full time with Jill next year. Motion. Second. All in favor? Covington Petersburg Library Board. It is recommended that Lawrence W. Hoagland be appointed to the Covington Petersburg Public Library Board for a four year term. The district every four years has to nominate someone to end. Um, Mr. Hoagland has been in this role and would like to continue it. Motion. Second. All in favor? Fundraisers. It is recommended that the fundraiser for the Southeast Fountain Elementary Student Council be approved to sell spirit wear throughout the school year. The goal of the fundraiser is to raise at least $750 profit by each school year um, and <coughs> promote a sense of unity, pride, and teamwork in our school. Motion. Second. All in favor? It is recommended that the Scholastic <coughs> Book Fair be approved as a fundraiser for the Southeast Fountain Elementary Library. This is an annual book fair. We have one in the fall. We also have the end of school year um, book fair. There are two ways sometimes um, profits are taken through money. Sometimes it's taken through books that we get for our library through that. So, um, Mr. Deal, each year we'll have this fundraiser once it's approved. Motion. Second. All in favor? Quotes. It is recommended that the quote from Savas Learning in the amount of $10,781.14 be approved to purchase additional teacher kits for the new science curriculum at Southeast Fountain Elementary School. The, we've purchased some things from this company, but these are additional materials for the number of teachers and the number of sections of classes that we have. Motion. Okay. All in favor? It is recommended that the perfection painting quote in the amount of $19,365 be approved to paint the cafeteria at Fountain Central Junior Senior High School. Um, I got several quotes for the painting of the um, high school cafeteria. Not only was perfection painting the most reasonable quote, 
They're the same company that did both our gym and our auxiliary gym last year and did a great job for us. So I'm happy to recommend them again. Motion. Second. All in favor? It is recommended that the quote from Performance Mechanical LLC in the amount of $15,000 be approved to install a bathroom in the new child care center at Southeast Fountain Elementary building. Um, this is, as you know, we're starting our new child care center for our employees and um, in the location that we're placing them, we have a sink, but we did not have a bathroom in there, so we need something for our kiddos there. Great. Motion? Second. All in favor? It is recommended that the quote from Perfection Painting in the amount of $19,645 be approved to paint the gym at Southeast Fountain Elementary School. Again, it's the same company. We did get a number of quotes, and this is the most reasonable, as well as a company that we worked with last year and did a great job for us. Motion. Second. All in favor? It is recommended that the quote from Gold Star Products in the amount of $105,943.30 be approved to make improvements to the cafeteria serving line at Southeast Fountain Elementary School. This funding comes from the funding we collect from the grant we have for student meals after we've paid for food costs and different things. We also have funding for upgrades um, and repairs to equipment and so forth. Last year, we were able to do the same thing at the junior senior high school. So this year we'd like to update and upgrade the equipment that we have at our elementary school. Motion. Second. All in favor? Student handbooks. It is recommended that the 2023-2024 Southeast Fountain Elementary School student handbook be approved as presented. Do you want to tell them any changes or anything? Um, if you're able to click on this, any changes we did highlight in yellow so you don't have to read the whole thing. Um, they were pretty minimal. Some of them were just warnings. Um, others were just a couple things we ran into this year. We want to make sure we're supporting our handbook. So um, like I said, they're pretty minimal. But they are highlighted for you. And you got yours done way ahead of schedule. <laughs> You're on I saw schedule. <laughs> I, told them, you in June. I told them you that <laughs> you had until June. I couldn't resist because the two of you looked at each other and I knew what you were thinking. I know. <laughs> this is a lot more expensive than mine. <laughs> Take a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Second. All in favor. Uh, the business. It is recommended that the flex day currently on January 26, 2024 be moved to January 15, 2024 in recognition of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. You had previously approved the 2023-24 school calendar, um, but people within our school community have asked about Martin Luther King Day, and so sliding that flex day up a week and a half it would still fall at the same time of year, roughly, if we even need to use it. Um, but I'd like to make the change now so that families know in advance if, if you approve that. Motion. Second. All in favor? It is recommended that a two-hour early dismissal be approved for April 8th, 2024, to ensure all students are home safely prior to the total solar eclipse that will occur that afternoon. The eclipse is supposed to be very visible. Um, Central Indiana is supposed to be one of the best places to see it at 3.06 p.m. that day. Our students would be on the bus um, being transported to their homes. So my hope is that we can send our students home early with um, some information so they can do some at-home learning about the eclipse. <coughs> I also uh, reached out to the Indiana Department of Education School Accountability to see if this is permissible. And they said that two-hour delays have been allowed as a policy. Even if the event is unforeseen, this is foreseen. But um, we can do the last two hours or whatever time we want to. We can, um, they suggest we give a related 
eclipse activity for students to do at home. And also the Department of Ed indicated that they will be sending some guidance out soon because a lot of districts would like to do this very same thing. Motion. Second. All in favor? It is recommended that the $1,000 donation from the Fountain Trust Company be accepted to sponsor the cheer squad at Fountain Central Junior Senior High School. Um, did anyone know any more about that? I, I just know that they're wanting to help out our squad with things that they need. I think they're going to advertise like on t-shirts and things like that for them, possibly even like shirts that they'll throw and, and stuff like that. Okay. Motion. Second. All in favor? It is recommended that the grant from the Southeast Fountain Community Foundation in the amount of $4,000 be approved to purchase equipment needed to start the new Mini Mustang Child Care Program. Um, I'm thankful Manel, for Manel Hessler writing this grant and reaching out to the Community Foundation and the Foundation determining that this was a worthwhile project. They are happy to see that that we're bringing child care a uh, true need for not only those in our district, but people in our community. Right now, we're at least solving the problem for people in our district by giving this opportunity. And um, so I'm happy that right. they made this donation. Motion. Second. All in favor? It is recommended that the grant from Purdue in MAC in the amount of $2,000 be approved to purchase equipment needed for a new biomedical course at Fountain Central Junior Senior High School. And I'm thankful for Lindsay for writing that grant application and getting this. And Lindsay, if you want to tell them any more about it. Well, as you know, we are adding um, a new Project Lead the Way um, course path uh, starting next year. And since it's new, there is some equipment that we don't already have. So just trying to get a little help with funding to make those purchases. Great. Motion. Second. All in favor. Okay, elementary report. Over the last several summers, we've offered um, a summer school of sorts to our students more as a jump start back into the school year. Um, so helping those students that you know, have not been in school for 10 weeks to get back into those routines, brush up on some skills, um, but we really started to notice even pre-COVID a decline in our attendance because, um, you know, children don't want to cut their summer short to come back to school early. Um, and really after COVID, we saw a really large dip in participation. And so we worked with our grade level chairs and then they worked with their teams to come up with a new format for us, really just wanting our kids to be excited about learning and about school. So July 24th to the 27th, um, we are offering Mustang Kids Camp. So five of our staff members have proposed um, camps that they will be hosting that lend themselves to the interests of our students while still incorporating those academic skills. So we have everything from STEM um, to robotics to cupcake decorating to art and music. So um, lots of fun things we've participate in. So we sent this home to get enrollment. Um, and we are, last year we had 28 students um, enroll in our Jumpstart and we are at 71 wow. signed up this year. Um, we had three staff members last year that included a bus driver um, that were just saying that we have six staff members who signed up for this. Um, we had others interested, they just couldn't make it work with these dates. So we're hoping this continues to grow. Like I said, just making sure we're providing fun learning to our students because sometimes I don't think that's their view of school and also making our staff relatable that you know we do things outside of school um, so that they can bring those hobbies and those interests and passions to our students so we're it's really awesome. excited to start something new. Wow, 71. Wow, awesome. Yeah. Okay, that's a huge <laughs> high school report. Okay, so we were expecting a student representative here, so I'm hoping that maybe she's emailed you with a viable excuse. No, we'll talk, we'll talk to her tomorrow. Okay. So I'm going to actually kind of paraphrase both our student report and our high school report because um, we do have some, some interesting things to share. Um, we really want to thank Sandy Cashmer, who has our uh, Fountain Central High School Spanish Club. 
she does a ton of fundraising. Um, she, she's got a snack shop in her classroom. Um, all in total this year, her club was able to raise an award over $7,000 to staff, students, and community events. Just a, a, we have a list that take up a full page, but $500 to Church of God Food Pantry. She gave $500 for work on the tennis pavilion, $400 to celebrate our teachers through teacher appreciation, um, $600 went to families in need at Christmas. I know she sponsors a scholarship for students. Um, well, I think that's part of the union, actually, so I'll, I'll stop there. But she does such a tremendous job and, and gives and gives and gives and really doesn't get a lot of credit for that. That's definitely doesn't to her own horn. So special thanks to Sandy and Spanish Club. I um, want to wish congratulations to all of our seniors um, for their efforts over the last four years to make it to graduation. We're excited to send them off. Um, next Friday night, our graduation ceremony, super exciting time of year. Um, with that, our guidance department, Mrs. Yeager, Mrs. Blankenship, Mrs. Foxworthy, Mrs. Watson, spring senior events it is a job in and of itself. And for them to always pull everything off, it's seamless. We never have to worry about it. They've done a great job of making the event special for our senior class. Um, so we just want to thank them. Um, we want to say thank you and unfortunately goodbye to four staff members. Um, Tom Thompson was a, a instructional aide who was with us this year. He's going back to Indiana State to pursue his master's degree. Um, I believe roughly 10-year employee Clint Burney in our social studies department is, is leaving us this year. He's going to be taking over um, the family farm. His, his dad's at the point where it's time to pass the torch and Clint's gonna open up a new chapter. Um, Long-time instructional aide in our ELL department, Belinda Dotson, um, is, is seizing another opportunity that is a great opportunity for her. Um, she's going to be leaving us. And then Brian Turner, our engineering uh, project lead the way instructor. Again, um, love his time here at Fountain Central. He's been here for, for a long time and done a lot of tremendous things for our program. He's got an opportunity that it's too good for him to pass up. Um, so he's going to be leaving us. We want to thank those four staff members for their time and dedication. They've all done an outstanding job. This year, as we know, was an interesting year for us at the high school, obviously bringing two new grade levels of students over. With that, there was a ton of movement in our staff. Um, we had 12 first-year teachers this year, first year to our building. Some were already in our court. Um, we just want to say congratulations and thank you to these first-year teachers. We're expecting them back next year, so <laughs> you didn't run them off. Um, just Allison Acton, Susie Bowles, or Jill Deal, Megan Doss, Jacob Burrell, Herb King, Rachel Lewis, Ashley, Denise McCurley, Henry Schmidt, Ann Shropshire, and Lisa Stewart Merriman. They made it. They did a <laughs> tremendous job. Um, I, I promise you we'll have less than 12 new staff members <laughs> on board next year. It's <laughs> a guarantee. Um, and then there's one more thing I want to share that honestly really moved me a little bit this week. Um, you know, a lot of times in our role, and in your role too, you get a lot of, you, you feel a lot of complaints and you don't always get as many celebrations as you want. So we've got Miss um, Susie Baldwin and Renee Howell, who are, are two teachers in our English department. So when I came up to the building on Monday morning, I looked and I was like, man, somebody got after it this weekend. Um, some flower beds and some areas in the front of our building that, that were needed to get tidied up were spick and span. Came to find out that Renee and Susie got together over the weekend and hauled it up here and, and did some work on their own time and unannounced to any of us. Um, and just put in a little bit extra time just out of the goodness of their heart. Um, and then today, the two of them, we've got a young lady who's a graduating senior. Um, she's kind of had a, a, a rocky relationship at home. I, I know for a fact she's been in at least three different homes this year, just kind of bouncing around a little bit. Um, she recently had a, kind of a disagreement, I, I believe, with, with the folks at home and 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 Susie and Renee found out that her parents had decided to cancel her graduation party. 
Um, so we were invited to come down to Mrs. Baldwin's room this morning. Mrs. Baldwin had her prep period. When we walked in, Renee and Susie had set up a full open house. They had dessert spread, decorations, cards. Um, they invited Renee's freshman class to come over and celebrate with the young lady um, just to give her a celebration, to give her an open house. And, sorry. That's special. They didn't have to do that. And, and honestly, when I left there today, I was like, man, not only are they doing something special for these kids, they're modeling that for, for 20 other kids that just came over to get, be a part of it and to eat 15 donut holes. <laughs> But even for me, like at 45 years old, when I left there and walked back up the ramp to my office, I was, it just gave me like, I just thought about myself a little bit and said, okay, like, how can I be a little bit more like that? You know, and it, it, they just taught me so much. And like Renee especially has been here for 34 years. And when I think about the type of person she is and the type of teacher she is, and it's really uh, makes me emotional to think about all the kids that she's touched over those times. So two of them are going above and beyond. I just wanted to give them a shout out, celebrate them a little bit today. Okay, discussion items. Um, first of all, the board asked me to check into possibly one of our buses rather than <coughs> trading it in or selling it or anything, possibly um, having it painted or something to create a Mustang bus for our teams to use sometimes or team spirit. Um, we've investigated that. We do have a bus that we can use that without um, trading it in the, to get it wrapped and have it designed for us, the cost will be anywhere between eight and $12,000. So I'm not asking you to improve, excuse me, approve a quote right now, but I want to know if you want me to still pursue that and get a quote for it and move forward with that, or if that's out of the realm of what you foresaw. I say yes. So move forward with the quote. All right, we will do that. I will tell you that the price of buses are going up significantly, have gone up. For example, when you approved our bus replacement plan in our last budget, the price at that time that we anticipated for the mini buses were right around 60000 They are now about $108,000 for those same buses. So it has significantly increased the prices of what we will be spending as we purchase new buses. This particular bus would not be a new bus. It would be a bus that we have that's, that's not used a whole lot right now. Um, I also would like right now um, for the community, I know that everyone that's in this room right now has worked on the strategic plan. Um, I just want to go through this very quickly because all of you in this room have seen it, but for anyone that's watching online and seeing our board meeting, um, the strategic plan, this has not been voted on yet. This is um, still a discussion. I'm going to post it, and if we get any comments, I will share that next month before I ask you to vote on it. But I will say we've worked all year with Dr. Byron Ernst, and um, he has helped us by meeting with a multitude of groups. He met with every um, grade level of student groups. He's met with staff at every building and at transportation and, and maintenance facility had an opportunity. He's met with board members, with administrators, with community support people. Um, lots of people had a chance to come in and he gathered a lot of information and then the steering committee who has worked on this came together and um, have updated our mission to provide a foundation for growth and success in an environment that makes everyone feel better. <laughs> Thank you. 
our vision to develop an inclusive educational community that provides various pathways for future success. The core values that our plan is built around is to provide a safe environment, commit to academic excellence, inspire growth and development, model and build character, and embrace inclusion and diversity. Our theory is if we provide a safe and healthy school environment where we maximize our resources and appreciate all staff, students, and families, then our school will be student-centered and provide high academic performance. We hope to accomplish this through four strategic pillars, safe and healthy school environment, academic performance and programming, appreciate and value all staff, students, and families, and a financially stable school corporation. Um, some things in here you'll see, we'll be adding in here who served on the four pillars. We had a day, April 7th, where all staff members had the opportunity to come while students had an e-learning day, and we worked in groups to put these pillars together. I'm not going to read everything in there. It will be posted on our website. Um, but for each of those four pillars, we came up with some strategies and action steps. Who is responsible for those things, those roles and responsibilities? And then a start date and an end date of when we hope to, to get these things accomplished. Some of the things, for example, have already started. Um, you know, immediate, our safety plan and things like that. We're always looking at updating that and revising it and improving on our safety plan. But some of the things may not begin until, um, for example, here's one for August of 2024. So it, it goes out throughout this five years and will be ongoing through there and we'll annually look at this and see if we're meeting those goals and objectives and the timeline that we've set forth. Talk about any problems that we've encountered and how we can address those as well as celebrate those successes, the things we're getting in place. Because I really truly believe that if we put these things that we've worked on in place, we're just going to continue to see great success in this district. Cool. and and make people feel welcomed and valued here. Okay. okay. I'm gonna move into the okay. statements from the superintendent. Um, first of all, I would like to congratulate Mr. Adam Acton and our Building Trades CTE program along with our community partners. I was fortunate on May 3rd to be able to attend an Awards of Excellence ceremony in Indiana, a recognition ceremony. Um, our program, because of the number of volunteers we have, won an award from the government for outstanding secondary partnership. We have more than 20 community partners who have donated $500 or more in time or finances towards our housing projects. That is unheard of, and especially in a small community like this, to have that many great community partners. So the state recognized how amazing that was. So along with Adam Acton, um, two of our largest benefactors, Renee McGrady from Hillsboro Hardware, and Lisa Allen from Allen Real Estate and Auction were able to attend the ceremony too. And if you take the journal review in today's journal review, there is a picture of them as well as a write up about the award they got. So we're happy that we get to celebrate that with the community. We've also put it on our website and we just wanna tell about the great things that we're able to do here because of the partnerships that we have with organizations in the community. Um, also, in the paper today, we celebrated her at a board meeting um, last month. 
But I want to note that Cindy Allward, our treasurer of the year for Indiana Region 4 through IASPO, was also featured in the newspaper today. So we're excited that, that they're sharing the good things that are happening with, with Southeast Fountain. Um, lots of accomplishments to share tonight. Um, the first one I want to sh share some athletic accomplishments from this school year. And please keep in mind that softball, baseball, track, boys golf, and girls tennis are not completely up to date because their seasons haven't ended. But just to share some things that, that happened this year, um, in the fall, football, Luke Foxworthy, Owen Acton, and Dawson Blue were all WRC. Luke Foxworthy, the IFCA Academic All-State and IFCA 1A All-State Region 4. All-Star tight end, National Football Foundation Scholar Athlete, and Luke Foxworthy, Fall Mustang Club Award winner. For girls golf, Autumn Payne was all WRC. In boys cross country, Hayden Clare and Ethan Malady, all WRC. Hayden Clare was honored at Benton Central Sportsmanship Banquet for excellent sportsmanship and nominated by the Benton Central Runners. Hayden Clare was the Elks October Athlete of the Month, and Hayden Clare was the WRC champion for cross country. In girls cross country, Braley Hoagland was all WRC and also the Elks November Athlete of the Month. In boys tennis, Gabe McCollum, Lucas Miller, and Kobe Wolf were all WRC, and the boys tennis team was the WRC champs. Winter sports in boys basketball, Will Harmon and Mason Larkin were all WRC. Will Harmon was the Journal Review Player of the Year, the IBCA Top 100 Underclass Workout, Mason Larkin, IBCA Top 60 Workout. Will Harmon set a new record for threes made in a game with 10 in a game for South, South Newton. Mason Larkin set a new record for blocks in a game with five versus Liberty Christian. The boys basketball team was the bi-county champion, the WRC champion, the sectional champion, and for the first time in the district's history, a regional champion. Our girls basketball, Braley Hoagland and Hannah Prickett were all WRC, and Hannah Prickett also was 15th annual Indiana class basketball all-star classic. In boys swimming and diving, Chase Witzman, um, for the 50 and 100 freestyle was all WRC. Chase Witzman was the Elks November Athlete of the Month. He was the Winter Mustang Club Award winner and also the Kirk Gentrip Scholarship winner. In girls swimming and diving, I told you there's a lot. Um, Mary Rice in the 100 breaststroke was all WRC. In wrestling, Waylon Frazee, Andrew Woodrow, all WRC. Waylon Frazee, sectional champion and semi-state qualifier. Boys golf, Jalen Payne and Wes Jackson were all WRC. Jalen Payne hit a hole in one this year at Rivercrest. In girls tennis, Haley Webb, Alita Malady, Melody Munoz, and Hannah Prickett were all WRC. And the girls tennis team were the WRC co champs. In girls track, Braley Hoagland was all WRC. In the 100 meter, 200 meter, 300 meter, and hurdles champion. Braley Hoagland was sectional champion in the 100 meter and 400 meter. And Braley was also had a new school and by county record in the 100 meter. In boys track, Hayden Clare was all WRC in the um, three, 300 meter champion. In softball, Casey Kirkpatrick was the Elks ap April Athlete of the Month, and Casey Kirkpatrick set a new record, 19 strikeouts versus Bethesda Christian. Um, sorry, trying to make sure which side I read. Um, then we received exemplary sportsmanship reports from the IH IHSAA um, for boys basketball on February 2nd and December 21st boys basketball, girls basketball on December 8th, football on October 28th, 
Football on October 14th, cross country on October 4th, football on September 30th, football on September 16th, and um, volleyball on September 15th. All of those were accolades that came from our officials and so forth because of the sportsmanship and the good attitudes of our kids. So I wanted to highlight some of those athletic achievements because there are so many that that we just, it's unbelievable. And I'm thankful to our student athletes, our coaches, the families who make sure their students are able to be here and participate in that. And to our athletic director who supports all of that and who got all of these statistics to me in like 20 minutes when I asked for it, I think. Um, so, because he keeps good records, so I'm appreciative of that. Um, the next thing I want to celebrate our own Quinn, who's standing back there quietly filming all of this. I just want to share some of the technology things that have happened thanks to his department and what he does. Um, he resolved 458 help desk tickets. This was by May 10th, so this number's higher. Um, as a department from August 1st to May 10th, um, they implemented of a uh, a new way to keep us safe across the dish across the district of all staff. Um, he purchased 500 Chromebooks with ECF three funds. 800 aging Chromebooks were replaced across the district in two years. He continued staff device replacement, rollout of Chromebooks for money and management savings, um, audio visual replacement. E-rate approval for infrastructure upgrades, server replacement is taking place, and 401 devices were loaned to students in the spring sem semester alone, 603 since tracking began in October 1st for students who forgot to turn them in or who forgot them at home or who hadn't charged them, whatever it may be. So, you know, kudos to our technology department and to our IT director. Um, Spanish Club, I don't have to share all of their accomplishments because um, that was shared by Mr. Shady, but I'm very grateful for our Spanish Club members and for our Spanish teachers. Um, our students are not here tonight, but I do want to thank Marley and Sammy, who have been our student contributors. Um, I have from the school board a thank you gift for them if their administrators will make sure that they get those, but we're very appreciative of them. Marley is graduating and will be going on to college, so um, she's been with us for two years serving in this role. Sammy is a junior, so we're hopeful that she will be back next year um, as our senior representative on the board. Um, I want to thank all of the staff, administrators, teachers, support staff for another great year. Hard to believe we have only a few days left in this school year, and it has been with all the changes that we had this year. Um, it's been fabulous. And then the last thing um, that I want to share, this came in the mail today, and I want to congratulate our school board of directors who received from the Indiana School Board Association today an exemplary governance award presented in recognition to Southeast Fountain School Corporation School Board by displaying continued evidence of leadership and exemplary governance. And really, um, so we'll hang this award here in the boardroom for you, um, but from myself and all of the staff at Southeast Fountain, Thank you for your governance, the time you put into school board meetings, um, your thoughtful consideration of the things that are brought before you, and your support of the things that we want to do in our buildings and classrooms. So thank you and congratulations on your award. Thank you. We should be doing that to you guys. <laughs> well, now's our chance. Yes, it is. our concerns from the board. <laughs> well, I have to, yep. and I'm overwhelmed by what you just said. I mean, I was getting teary. 
I mean, yeah, it's I amazing. That's what I started with. I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was about 45 pounds. It's choked up more than me. So uh, uh, I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to tell you that, and I tell people all the time, people have no idea how much money and how much time that teachers and administrators put into the school. They have not a clue. And when I tell that, I had one person say, well, don't they have a fund for that? <laughs> no, they don't. But why not? But we're but happy I, to raise your taxes. <laughs> <you can't assume laughs> yes. But I mean, it's amazing. I mean, I, I can't, all the programs that you guys have personally done, that, you know, that helps the kids. I mean, I'm overwhelmed. Thank you. And I'd like to reiterate what Dr. Grimes has said, because I don't know what your job is like, but from the outside looking in, it's got to be one of the most difficult jobs, but one of the most rewarding. And um, so we do appreciate another year that you've given us, but a successful year. Yes, Thank you so Thank much. You. Yeah. Thank you. I'm very well, <laughs> it's, it's just a, it is overwhelming and it's, it's great what everyone does. Not you guys here and the ones that don't always make it out that we don't see every day. It's wonderful. Okay. Document signing's already been done, so we're ready for adjournment. I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? All right. And the time you. is 7.26. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All that, and I still got down in it. Hey.